Hello, welcome to another edition of Lockdown Lounge. Um, this is an account from 1386. It is John of Gaunt, the Duke of Lancaster, with the King of Portugal leading an expedition to Galicia in northwestern Spain against the King of Castile. The reason the English are there, of course, is the King of Castile is supported by the French. So not much explanation needed there. Enemy of my enemy and all that. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, I might just call this uh, Mad Dogs and John of Gaunt. The only things to be found out in the midday sun. So, these two great lords and their armies were in Galicia. They stripped the country of food. The days grew hotter and hotter. Until no one dared to go out riding after nine o'clock unless he wanted to be scorched by the sun. No grass could grow, nor any other eatable thing, so hard and dry and sun-baked was the earth. The knights and squires saw how dangerous the situation might become, and the shortage of foodstuffs and the increasing strength of the sun. They began to grumble, and their complaints ran through the army. So, these two great lords and their armies were in Galicia. They stripped the country of food. The days grew hotter and hotter until no one dared to go out riding after nine o'clock unless he wanted to be scorched by the sun. No grass could grow, nor any other eatable thing, so hard and dry and sun-baked was the earth. The knights and squires saw how dangerous the situation might become and the shortage of foodstuffs and the increasing strength of the sun. They began to grumble and their complaints ran through the army. This campaign is shaping badly. Two things tell against us particularly. We are taking women with us, and they always want to sit about. This Spanish land is not a pleasant one. Agreeable to a campaign across as France is, with all those big villages, that rich country, those cool rivers, lakes and pools, mild and palatable wines to give new strength to fighting men. In temperate climate, everything is different here. The summer wore on and the sun rose higher in the sky and the days became marvellously hot. It was around midsummer when the sun is in its strength and pride, especially in those countries of Spain and Granada, and the kingdom far from the regions of the north. Since the beginning of April no moisture had descended on the earth, neither rain nor dew and the grass was burnt brown. The Englishmen ate quantities of grapes when they could get them because they were refreshing and juicy. And then they drank those strong wines of Lisbon and Portugal to quench their thirst. But the more they drank, the hotter they became, for the wines burnt their livers and lungs, and all the entrails of their stomachs being quite foreign to the natural diet. The English live on mild flavoured food and good heavy ales, which keep their bodies humid. Now they had dry, sharp wines and drunk copiously to forget their sorrows. The nights there are hot, after the heat of the previous day, but near dawn the air suddenly grows cold. This caught them unawares, for at night they could not bear to have a blanket over them and slept naked because heated by the wine. Then came the morning chill, which struck through their whole bodies, giving them sickness and fever and afflicting them with dysentery of which they inevitably died. It was the same with barons, knights and squires, as with humble people. These are the fortunes of war. It must be said that the Duke of Lancaster in Castile would never have lost so many good men in battle as died of illness on that campaign. He himself nearly died of the epidemic. Out of 1,500 men-at-arms and a full 4,000 archers, whom the Duke of Lancaster had led out from England, not more than half returned, or even fewer. Well, um, in some respects, quite a modern tale. I expect if you go to Spain today, um, maybe outside of a pandemic, uh, you will still find some pretty ill-looking English people suffering from the heat and uh, too much alcohol. So, some things don't change, do they? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time.